So in this tutorial, we're gonna take this image and it's got a lot of dark areas down in the water. We're gonna change that so that the image looks like this and it's a much brighter, more colorful image. It's very easy edit to do and we're gonna use a variation of luminosity masking to make that happen and it's a lot simpler than what you might think by just using Photoshop. Now, as you may have known, Lightroom Classic has become a lot more complex than what it needs to be. It used to be that it was a simple alternative to avoid the complexities of Photoshop, but that has changed. So I'm going to give a brief introduction to how this would be done on Lightroom Classic. The results would not be as good, by the way, as what we can get out of Photoshop using fewer steps with a lot more flexibility and a lot easier to do overall. Now, the raw file for this is actually included in my course on professional exterior photography, where I go through in depth how to deal with this, as well as other edits that would be applied to this, and of course, a lot of other topics as well that are concentrated on professional exterior photography. And that's one of the courses that I have in my series of real estate photography courses. And if you're not familiar with any of those, I have links in the description of the video so that you can check that out. Here though, what we're gonna do is we're gonna step through some of the edits here so you can see how simple it is to just use Photoshop to do this luminosity masking. Let's start in Lightroom Classic and just see what we would be up against to do this. Now, preferably, I would like to do some exposure blending and that would be with something out of a bracket, just in certain areas that we would be applying this, not HDR, but just some exposure blending. But let's say that we just have this single exposure here. We'd be afraid of turning up the high, the uh, blacks on this or maybe turning up the exposure, the shadows, whatnot, the brightness, because we'd introduce noise. But we're going to take care of that very easy in Photoshop so we're going to have something very, very smooth. So in fact, if we take a look at the finished image, and that's over here, and if we take a look at that full screen and we zoom in at 100%, you can see that it's butter smooth in these areas that we're going to brighten up. So there is not going to be a problem problem using noise with using these techniques. But going back to our original image, one thing to note is that this already has a very good color base and that's how we're able to bring out some very rich colors here. Nothing had to be done other than to get that color base using a very good camera and a good landscape lens, something that I really emphasize in my pro exterior course. In this case, I was using a Nikon Z5 and a 20 millimeter prime. Don't take shortcuts when you're doing outside photos with a lens and camera. These these are not going to be neutral colors. Compared to a lot of interior real estate photography, which tends to be neutral, outside you need to have that vibrance that people associate with. And it has to be natural, and that's what comes out of using a good lens. Also with that then, I also used a uh, the OEM workflow that I show in the course, where we're able to use a custom color profile for the raw file decoding using OEM software. Anyway, so this was a TIFF, but you can still use this on raw files if you wanna try this and follow along with something else that you have. So first to compare, let's take a look at if we were just to use Lightroom Classic. So the way that you would do it in Lightroom Classic is using the masking, which would be up here. Now, once again, this is not how I recommend doing it. I'm gonna show you something much simpler, but just as an example, what you would do is you'd go up here to the mask and for luminosity masking, you would select a range. You would then select a luminance range. And when you do, you'll get an eyedropper but you can click anywhere or you can also drag. For instance, I could drag a little area here and say sample that. Now, what it does is it shows me then the uh, overlay of what it has selected. And you can change how that looks and you can also then change the tolerance up here on how much of that's supposed to show through. So you can see here I'm adjusting just how much of that shadow area should be selected and you can refine that as you need to with these sliders. Once you have then, you would then start changing things like for instance, the exposure, maybe bringing up some of the shadows, but already we can see a problem. Don't worry about the trees and all that up here. Let's zoom in here a little bit and see what's going on. So here you can see, especially going here full screen, 
it did brighten it up some, but in the process, it really made some fuzziness out of this because it's just not working very well on what it's selecting for its luminance range. So you could take this and you could refine the mask further. So I could go back in here to masking, I could select this mask, and then I could use various things to subtract from it. But then after a while, you have this whole big mess of stuff that just gets overly complicated compared to what we're gonna do in Photoshop. And also this just doesn't have the best results. So let's just back out of here all the way to where it was first imported. And then what I would do, get completely out of masking before doing anything else, all you would do is right click and say edit in and then edit in Photoshop. Once it is opened in Photoshop, the luminosity masking portion becomes extremely easy. All that you need to do is just go to the select menu and you wanna select color range. Now, this may seem odd selecting color range because we want luminance, but that's what we're gonna select. So select color range and you'll see this dialog pop up. And this is typical that you would use for sampling colors, but there's more to this tool than what first meets the eye. Up here, instead of select sampled colors, what you can do is click on that and you can select either highlights, midtones, or shadows. So down here, let's select shadows. Now immediately you can see it's selecting that, but it is a little bit hard to see. So what you would do is in the selection preview, change it from none to something like quick mask. Now that's basically the opposite of what you're seeing in Lightroom Classic. What I like to do though, is I like to use the gray scale. So this shows me better how much is selected and where it's feathered in. What you would first do is move this fuzziness slider all the way to the left, just to get started on our selection. And the range slider here is how much of those shadows we're gonna select. So we can select to where we think they're the darkest, and if you need to, you can go back and forth to see the image for reference here, or you could turn this back off to none so you could get a better idea. But either way, we can see that we're starting to select a good amount of the shadow area here, and then fuzziness allows us to then blend that in to what degree we think we should blend that in. Let's say that that looks good right there. Once we have this selection, then we select OK. Now, this is doing something similar that would have been done in the luminance, the luminance range that we would have selected in Lightroom Classic. What we want to do now is feather this selection a lot more. So what you would do is go to Select, and then you want to go to Modify, and then to feather. And you wanna feather it by something big, usually 50 pixels. Now watch what'll happen when I click OK. Instead of having all these marching ants, then I've got a more refined area. And you can see it around the, uh, the water here. It's more refined and within the right areas. So now that I've got this selected, I can put an adjustment layer on top of here that's gonna give me a lot of flexibility and like Lightroom Classic, it'll have a mask. So I'm going to go up to Layer, and then New Adjustment Layer, and then a Brightness Contrast Layer. You can name it whatever you'd like. When you click OK, it'll make a mask with what we just selected. There is our luminosity mask. That's the beginning of it. The next thing is now is to use this adjustment layer to change our brightness. So we'll increase our brightness quite a bit. Let's move it up there. Now you can already see we're getting a better looking image when we look at the water down here than what we had using Lightroom Classic. But this is just the start of it. And you can increase this to whatever degree you feel you'd like. Okay, let's just collapse that for now. We wanna get rid of all this up here. We don't need to apply it to that mask. Now we can work off this mask, but a beauty in Photoshop is to be able to add multiple masks by simply using groups. And all you have to do is right click on that brightness contrast layer. Then you can say group from layers. We'll name this the loom group. That's our luminosity mask. That's all that it is. We'll click okay, and then we'll add a layer mask to that. To do that, I like to go up to layer, and then to layer mask and reveal all. There's a lot of ways to do it in Photoshop. 
But with that now, and it's all white, that means everything is showing. So we can erase off that but a good tool to use in cases like this when you're working with a landscape or you're working with exterior real estate photography is to add a gradient. Now that tool is over here. If you click down over here and hold, you'll see there's where the paint bucket is and then the gradient tool. If you select the gradient tool, there's two options up here, a gradient or a classic gradient if you're using newer versions of Photoshop. The gradient tool is what you want you wanna make sure that you have this one all the way to the left selected. It's gonna go from all to none. That's what the white to black, as you can see, this one here is if you do like a radial, this is like a diamond, other things. This is just fine, use the one on the left. And then up here, if you click on this, you wanna make sure that you go under basics and you want to go from black to white. And what that does is that will then erase off of the mask where we're gonna put this gradient. Okay, to do that now, what you do is start down about here, and then you would click and drag down. You can see what's already happening, it's erasing, but it's giving me that nice gradient with a lot more control than what I had if I'd used Lightroom Classic. Now, if you wanna see where that's applied, you can see it here on the mask, but you can also hit the backslash uh, button, and that gives you that red and view that uh, looks like it would in Lightroom Classic. But what you can also do here is you can drag these things around. You can see if I move it this way, see how it shifts that, uh, that mask around. So you can also take this and say, I wanna lower that a little bit more, maybe position this someplace else. I could move the whole thing if I wanted to, but it's good right there. So this is where we want it. Let's say that we wanna really feather that in nicely. Okay. So that's good, but we still have some other areas here. So what I would do is you would take the eraser tool. And with the eraser at about a 30% flow, now you can also erase off of this same mask. So you would just go across these areas that you don't wanna have any of that applied. Now remember, it's mostly applied to the shadow areas anyways, so we don't have to really worry too much about the bright areas. To then see where this is taking effect and not, you can do shift click and there's the whole thing and then shift click and you'll see it goes away. To see how we started, you can do alt click on the eye down here and then alt click back. You can see there's still a lot here. So for instance, I would just take the eraser, 30% flow allows me a lot of feathering, and then I would just take and remove that there and maybe a little bit here. So now that's looking good, but if we zoom in 100%, we're gonna see some noise. So let's go in 100% and we don't have any noise here, but if we go down over here to where we really up those shadows, there's the slightest bit of grain. Now, is it really bothersome? Some would argue that it's okay, but let's clean that up. An easy way to do that is you would stamp your layers and then work with a smart object. Now, I know that may sound complicated if you've never done that, but it's very simple and I'm gonna step you through that. So, what you would do is at the very top, you would do Control-Alt-Shift-E. That makes a stamped layer, in other words, a copy of everything that was visible. Now, we can edit this layer, but the best thing to do so that you can go back and edit it further and revert any changes is right click on that and say convert to smart object. That's it. Being a smart object now, and this is something I really emphasize throughout my courses, is that when you've got a smart object, you have a history of everything you're gonna do just to that layer. So in this case, what we're gonna do, and we'll be able to see the history, is we're going to go up to Filter, and then Camera, Raw, Filter. In Camera, Raw, Filter, you wanna to go to the Detail section. And in the Detail section, make sure sharpening is zero, and you wanna bring noise reduction up to 100% and color noise reduction up to 100%. Now, you might think that's really pushing it, but when we go in here and take a look at 100%, it is a little bit soft in some areas, but we still have enough detail in the water. What's more important though, is that since it's a smart object, we can change that later if we want, and also we're gonna do some more masking. So let's just click OK. Once that's applied, you can see down here the smart filters that were applied. I could go back here, 
and double click on, for instance, camera raw filter. And there's our settings up here. I could decide to change this if I wanted to, but we'll just keep it there at 100 and we'll say cancel. Yes, we'll cancel all those changes. Okay, so now we can go in 100%. And we can see that we have something that has a lot less noise, but it's applied everywhere. So what we want to do is to add a layer mask to this. So once again, go to the layer menu, go to layer mask, and then this time though, we'll go to hide all. Now we want to take a brush and with the brush tool at about a 30% flow, you can go in here then 100%. And now you can brush in where you want that applied. And that's all there is to it. So this then gets rid of that noise selectively where we decided it needed to be removed. Now remember too, we only applied since we were using luminosity masking, we applied within the shadow region of the tonal range. So a lot of this really doesn't need to be corrected. For instance, when we go over here and see the egret, now, he's just a little corner soft because he was down here, but there is no noise there. There's no noise in these other areas of the image because they were bright, not selected, and because we also did that group mask on top of our luminosity mask. But you would just paint these areas in, and that's basically it. Then you could zoom out, and you could see this is what we have. Now, we could go further, and in the finished example, I did remove the, uh, the rose bush that was here, and then with a few other adjustments, the final image looks like this.